Hey guys, it's Chris here, and I want to update you on our monthly expense for our first month in Baja. I started out doing the first week, and it got really detailed. And while I keep really detailed notes, it's hard to relate the detailed notes to a video every single week, especially when we have so much other craziness going on. So if you're following our YouTube channel, I do appreciate that you're keeping up with all the videos that we're putting out. It's taking some time to get them together. Plus, we're also running our website. We're also working part-time, and we're also traveling and we're also volunteering so there's a whole lot going on and I realize that it's probably better just to do a monthly update and if you have specific questions I'd love to give you some information um, directly or personally if you have questions about how much it costs to stay in a certain place or to do certain activities that we show you that we do we'd love to tell you that on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, but breaking down exactly what we spend on every little detail has been very cumbersome again we do it for our personal budget I can show you our actual notebook that we keep all of our expenses in and uh, actually I'll go ahead and I'll do that right now just to give you a preview of our week one, week two, week three, and week four notebook. I journal all of our expenses and for the most part as you'll see we're doing a pretty good job of staying on budget. Of course there's always tricks that you can do if you are falling behind budget so for instance if you're falling behind on your grocery budget you just eat your pantry reserves if you're going over on fuel you stop moving if you're going over on other expenses you stop doing whatever it is that's causing those other expenses for instance laundry was an expense that was unforeseen uh, in some cases and so we just wear our dirty clothes well i wear my dirty clothes so if you see that your budget, if you're tracking your budget like we do on a daily basis, and if you see you're starting to go over in some areas, you can be really creative with making sure that you meet at the end of the month or at the end of the week. It'd be nice for the U.S. government to do this, but of course, not going political there. We don't have extra money. We can't print money. We don't borrow money. We have zero debt. So what we tell you is exactly how it is. And we do have a little bit of savings to draw from, so if we happen to go over a little bit in the month, which I'll show you we went over because of our fuel expenses month, we do have a little bit that we can pull out of savings um, to cover the overage, but we immediately tighten our belts the following week or the following month, and we get right back on track. So getting into the details, I'll go ahead and I'll show you the monthly overview. So if we look at our weekly budget for meals, at $10 per day and I'm budgeting basically 18 pesos per dollar which means that our numbers are actually going to be a little bit better at the end of the month and that's just how I like to think. I like to be more conservative with numbers so I have a little bit of an overage hopefully when everything's said and done. So $10 a week for seven days ends up being 1260 pesos. That's our meals weekly budget. Our camping weekly budget is also 1260 pesos our miscellaneous budget this covers any of our utilities like propane or laundry it also covers things that come up activities we want to do uh, that's 12 us dollars per day which is approximately 1512 pesos per week and that um, and then our fuel which is kind of an outlier for us but that's 1150 pesos uh, which is approximately 65 dollars per week so our weekly budget is 5,182 pesos. And now I'm going to go through the overview really quick and show you where we were doing good and where we were doing bad when it comes to each of these expenses. Again, we have three major line item expenses when we're traveling. One is for food, which includes going out to eat. It includes groceries. It includes a few times that I get to eat ice cream in my life. All that stuff goes under our meals expense. We also have camping, that's our second expense. Wherever we're staying, if we choose to stay in an Airbnb or, Airbnb or hotel, or camping or free camping, whatever we're doing, um, we have that camping expense as number two. And our third is our miscellaneous contingency, whatever you want to call it. That's kind of our, uh-oh, we didn't think about it, so we better have money somewhere for it. Um, so those are our three main expenses. And then, of course, the outlier for us is fuel. That's variable. We can't really predict it except if we tell ourselves we're not going to travel further than we know our fuel range would be for for how much we put in. So if we go back and we look at what we spent um, on a monthly basis for meals. We spent 7,755 pesos 
and we only budgeted 5,040 pesos. So that means we went over on meals by 2,715 pesos. That's uh, almost $60, which is a pretty big deal when our budget is not more than about twelve dollars or $1,300 total for travel. Our camping expense, however, we spent a total of 3,650 pesos and we had 5,040 pesos in our budget for camping. So we were actually under there by 1,390 pesos, about $26, $27. Our miscellaneous expense, we budgeted 6,048 pesos and we actually spent 3,865. So that means we were under pretty good on that, 2,183 pesos that we were down. So the cool thing is if we look at those three main expenses, we were pretty much right on. In fact, we saved a little bit uh, on our monthly budget. If we were to take meals, which we were over by 2,700, camping, which we were under by almost 1,400, and miscellaneous that we were under by almost 2,200, if we take those three, we're actually under budget for the month, which is awesome. What's not awesome is we didn't stick to our plan to not travel so much and our fuel expense really screwed us for the month. So we budgeted a total for fuel of 4,600 pesos. That's 2,300 pesos every other week or about one tank of gas every other week. So our monthly budget was 4,600 pesos and we actually spent 7,650 pesos on fuel. So we were over by 3,050 pesos, over $60. That's a pretty significant overage. So we're going to be looking in month two. How can we slow down our travel? The good news for us is the Baja Peninsula is only a little over a thousand miles long. So there's not so many places that we can go where we're going to keep racking up the mileage. So we're pretty confident in month two, we can recoup some of this 3,050 pesos. So if I look at all of those together, our meal overage, our camping underage, that's not even a word. Our miscellaneous underage, still not a word. And our fuel overage, we are over budget by 2,192 pesos for the month. Whew. Okay, that's not bad. That's $45, give or take. So we're in, we're in decent shape. We're talking about a full month of living in Baja. Um, we spent right around $1,300 US. And that includes all those expenses it doesn't include the outside expenses for our health insurance, our auto insurance, um, our entertainment expense, our, our business expenses that we have, um, and our health supplements that we take, but it does include everything you could expect reasonably if you were traveling in Baja for one month, if you travel on the budget that we travel on. So I do want to talk about each week, and week one was covered in its own video, so you can go back and watch that if you'd like to see some of the notes about what we spent, why we spent that much, uh, and where we stood after week one. You can go back and check out that video. Uh, week two, we traveled from San Felipe to Gonzaga Bay. So there was a little bit of travel. It wasn't a bunch. Um, we did consume some fuel, so we went over on our budget for fuel. Um, but some expenses that we had in our notes section was we did have to restock our propane, which was about 200 pesos. If you go back and watch that video, a guy tried to rip us off and charge us about 500 pesos. He didn't think I could speak enough Spanish and sure enough, I spoke enough Spanish to call him out on it. But it still cost us justly 200 pesos. We had squeaky brakes. You may have noticed that in our videos as well. So we were concerned. We hadn't had our brakes looked at in over a year. We went in and had the brakes looked at. Everything was fine, which was great. And for the hour or so that it took for them to look at the brakes, we were prepared to pay whatever was fair. And the owner of the shop ended up charging us 300 pesos. So about 18 US dollars, 17 or 18 US dollars for an hour of labor to tell us that our brakes were 100% fine. We'll pay that all day long. So that was 300 pesos that came out of our miscellaneous expenses. And then we had the, the data drama where Verizon left us hanging. Sorry, Verizon, we're done with you. Um, we ended up having to go get a SIM card, a Mexican Telcel SIM card, and that cost us 550 pesos to do that. But that gives us the uh, data that we need to be able to upload this video and all the others. And so we're okay paying that 550 pesos. In fact, we budgeted to pay Verizon a whole lot more, so we're actually going to be saving money on a monthly basis by going with buying SIM, SIM cards or re-upping our SIM card 
uh, data every time we need to, we'll save money and Verizon loses a customer for life. There you go, Verizon. Week three, we traveled from the Bay of Los Angeles to Mulahe. A little bit of travel. Um, we had to top off some fuel, which is about 800 pesos that we spent. We were under for this week by 1,200 pesos. So the reason we were under is that we free camped for four nights out of the seven in the week. Uh, we were at the Bay of LA for three of those nights. Spectacular, La Gringa Beach. Camped one night in the, in the plaza or the square at San Ignacio, an oasis off of US or Highway 1. It was really awesome to be there as well, and that was our fourth free night of camping. So we saved a lot on camping. In fact, we saved 860 pesos, almost $50 on camping um, by doing that. We did go over on meals. I'm a big guy. You figured that out. I didn't get this big by not eating. So we allowed ourselves to splurge on two meals out with our friends that we made, and that ended up costing us about a thousand pesos more than what we normally would have spent. We got a rain in the going out. I think we were excited that we didn't spend so much on camping. We were like, oh, we saved a bunch of money. Now let's go gorge ourselves on delicious food. It was delicious, but we can't afford to keep this pace up. When we save money because we're traveling full time, we need to just go ahead and put that money into our long-term savings. So every day we save money is a day longer we get to be on the road. Overall for week three, we were under by 1,200 pesos, which is pretty awesome. Looking at week four, we spent most of the week in the town or the village of Mulahe. Uh, in fact, all but one day we were in Mulahe. So we had long-term camping worked out where we paid for six nights and we got the seventh night free. Um, we also got into routines so we could go get groceries. We knew where to eat out or when to eat out if we wanted to. So we found a really awesome, cheap taco place to go eat um, when we wanted to go eat out. But we did have to top off our fuel at one point before we left. So that was, um, that was actually a big expense where we were over by 1,500 pesos on fuel. A couple other things happened when we were in Mulahe for why we were over by 1,700 pesos for the week. Fuel is a big one. We were over by 1,500 pesos because of fuel. Um, but we also had to buy another SIM card. We also had to buy a fishing rod. We watched all our, our friends fish all the time. We have reels that were great and awesome shape, but in the course of traveling the last year and a half through the United States and Canada and up to Alaska, we crushed our old fishing rods and said, oh, we'll replace them manana someday, not today. We'll get it next day. Manana, we kept saying that. And that finally came because we needed to get that taken care of. We needed to have a fishing pole. So we bought a fishing rod and we also paid to get laundry done. This was the first time we did laundry in the month that we had been in Mexico. So that cost us 250 pesos, which we found is a lot. But for clean laundry, I mean, what's the price on that? So for the week, we were over by 1,700 and almost 1,750 pesos, which is quite a bit. So going back three out of the four weeks, we were over, but that's mostly attributed to fuel. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Looking at things that we learned for the month. One, I eat too much. I'm not gonna blame Lindsay. She doesn't eat as much as me. I eat probably twice as much as her because I weigh twice as much as her. Maybe I eat three times as much as her because I really, really love food. I gotta cut that out. Second thing we learned is that our daily camping, when we're paying for camping, tends to be about 200 pesos in this part of Baja. 200 pesos is not $10. 200 pesos is closer to 11 and some change. So we may need to switch our budget around where our miscellaneous budget is $12 and our camping is $10. We're probably going to switch it so our camping is $12 and our miscellaneous is $10. that will help us with a little peace of mind so every time somebody says 200 pesos, we won't freak out and be like, oh, that's not $10, that's over $10. We'll say, fine, that's under $12, we are good with that. We also found that fuel by far is our biggest expense. It always has been, it probably always will be, particularly here where fuel is about $4.75 per gallon for diesel. So. We need to slow down. We keep saying that, and we've done a pretty good job of slowing down, but we're still over with our fuel, and so the only way that you cut back on fuel is you just stop driving. The last thing that we found, and we've always known because we love the western part of the United States, because we can free camp almost everywhere, we can find a place to camp for free, is in Baja there are free places to camp. We're going to put together a post for you where you can go to plenty of free places that are 100% safe. I won't say 100%, they're mostly safe um, and you can feel comfortable because there's other campers around and they're beautiful places and they're common. 
So it's not like you're just pulling off on a dirt road or camping on some street um, in an alleyway where you don't know what's going to happen or who's going to walk by. There are plenty of free places to camp. And we love that because we can recoup some of our expenses when we see we're going a little crazy on food. We can recoup some of that. Or if we're driving too much, we can recoup some in camping. And overall, that helps level out our budget. So one thing I'm gonna do is go back and look at what would our budget look like if we took fuel out of the equation? If we said fuel is a completely separate budget that we've got, let's say a wonderful donor said, I'm gonna pay for all of your fuel. So we're not worrying about fuel in our budget. If we do that, we are spot on for the month. In fact, if I look, we are 1300 pesos under budget for the month. So that would be about 70, 60 to 70 dollars. That's great. So again, if we take fuel out of the equation, we are under budget with what we've shown you, how we budget, how we spend our money, the tips and tricks that we use to stay on budget. We're actually under budget for our first month in Baja by 1300 pesos. All in all, we're really happy with our first month in Baja, our budget, our expenses, everything seems to line up. Of course, we would love to travel with a much bigger budget. So if you're feeling very generous, We'd appreciate any donations made to our fun fund or our food fund so I could eat a little bit more and be contento. Um, but we, we would always, like you, I'm sure, would love to have a bigger budget. So there's things that we would love to change about our budget if we had more. But the fact of the matter is we love this life. We're trying to drive from Alaska to Argentina over the course of two, three, four, five years. Who knows? With the pace of Baja, it's going to take a lot longer because we love this place. So we're trying to spend as little as we can traveling long term because every peso adds up, every dollar adds up. So when we can save here, it's going to allow us to live longer on the road. God willing, we continue this pace. We should be able to reach our goal of, of reaching Argentina because we are staying under our budget. And so far, we've not had to touch any of our long term savings which is awesome. If you like this video, if you learn from this video, if you are excited about your trip to Baja and you, you, you're getting a lot of information out of this video, please make sure to like it, leave us a comment, uh, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button so you know when we're adding new posts. So we'd appreciate you following along our journey so you can see the experience that we're having, the life that we're living while we're on the road in Baja and how that compares to our budget so you can see that this is 100% possible for you to plan your own trip like we're doing. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.